Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Georgina Burns on the line, and she's CEO over at Top Dog Social. Georgina, welcome to the show. Hi, Adam. How are you? Oh, man, I'm doing fantastic, and I'm excited about today's topic. So social media for small businesses, what they should know. Um, but before we get into that, I want to get a little bit more into what you're doing over at Top Dog Social. So first, tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Sure. Um, well, I started Top Dog Social over a year ago now. Um, I started it after uh, a long, successful career managing top brands like IBM and Dell and Intel and the likes of them. And after about 10 years of doing that, I decided actually that I wanted to help and support small businesses grow. Um, and ultimately, where we are right now is that social media is at the forefront of selling and really connecting with customers. Um, and I have a lot of expertise in that area. So I'm just really focused on helping small businesses grow. Um, through social media and, you know, focus on using the right platforms um, for their messaging and finding their audiences. That's awesome. Um, and, and our small business owners need you because they need social. And if they don't, if they're listening to this and they don't know they need social, that means they really need social. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's, uh, let's uh, transition into the topic. So uh, small businesses, what should they know about social, please? Um, well, first and foremost is to know that they can't do everything all at once um, mm -hmm. and that while communicating with their audience um, is key and making sure that they're providing value to that audience, um, they really need to understand that it, it, although it's not difficult per se, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of energy, and you really need to present yourself um, as an authentic uh, company that will help your audience, that will help your clients ultimately. Where do you find a lot of business owners? So obviously, um, you know, when you when you bring on a new client, they're, they're coming to you because they need help. So we're not saying this in a bad way, but we know they need help. Where do you find a lot of business owners when they come to you before they start working with you or just kind of like way off or maybe they're just they're just really missing the mark on, on what they're doing on social? Yeah, so I find um, uh, in the past year, the ones that I've been working with mostly are not social media savvy, and that's not to mm -hmm. say anything against them. They're, you know, doing 17 other things to keep their mm -hmm. businesses going and, and doing well. Um, but ultimately, it's understanding the effectiveness that social media can have and how, you know, if done right, you can really, you know, increase and boost your sales and boost your awareness um, with 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 a little a little focus on it. Um, the other thing to understand is because there are so like constant changes to the platform algorithms, um, you really need to stay on top of those changes so that you know that you're doing things the best way to optimize, you know, whether it's your money or your time or even just making sure that um, you're getting your, your message right to the right people. Um, so it's key that in this day and age, my number one um, a piece of advice for my clients is that they really need to understand that organic isn't enough anymore um, and that they need to set aside some dollars specifically for paid advertising on social media marketing or social media marketing platforms. Uh, I think that's a good a good one to go a little bit further with. Let's talk about um, the importance of paid advertising. I mean, because uh, and just to be clear for those of you listening that are like not social media savvy at all, um, which which we like by the way, because I want you listening to the show because you're going to learn a lot. So listen to all the episodes, lots of downloads. But the difference, just briefly stated, is uh, once upon a time you could just put a post on Facebook and Facebook would show all your friends or the people that followed your business page or something else. Now companies like Facebook and all the other platforms platform they hold you they hold you hostage you have to pay now it's pay to play yeah. if you want people to yep. see your posts then you have to pay it doesn't matter if I go, if I go and like your page and this changes by the way so what Georgina talks about in terms of algorithms and things changing but just think about it this way you put a post on Facebook you're lucky if 10% of your organic followers actually get to see that post um, if you want them to really see it then you're going to have to pay um, so I'll, I'll let you take it from there Georgina I just want to give them a preface yeah, no, that's a, that's a brilliant uh, summary of kind of what's going on. I would say it's even less than 10% now, um, specifically with uh, Facebook, it's actually less than 2%. Um, and so when you post and that less than 2% see it, 
uh, that Facebook allows them to see it and they don't like it and they don't engage with it, it's very unlikely that Facebook is going to show them to anybody else. Um, so it won't naturally come in their news feed versus obviously if they're going to see Adam Torres and they were like, oh, I want to check in on what Adam's doing and what he's posting, obviously they will see it. But um, Facebook um, needs to see that engagement, needs to see those likes from your audience in order for them to kind of release the post um, for others to see within your audience. So that's even with people that follow you. Um, mm-hmm. So it's even more, you know, if people that follow you for your business, for example, or just your friends and family, and they're not necessarily your target audience, paid advertising allows you to literally, you know, if you're a local business, you can say, okay, I just want to do it for this local area or this country or this region. For example, it's a really good place to start. Um, and then, for example, if your products are more specifically towards, you know, a specific gender, for example, or a specific age group, um, that targeting allows you to do that. So it cuts through kind of all the noise and makes sure, you know, it gives you a better chance that your post, that your ad will be seen by the right person and ultimately that they engage with it. So obviously that gets you uh, more points, I guess, with Facebook and Instagram, but, you know, the hope that it actually converts, right? Um, cause ultimately we're all here to grow business and sell, um, and sell whatever products and services we have. So, um, that's really what paid advertising can do for you. Um, and you can do it for little as two to three dollars a day, um, and really get some significant results if you do, you know, use the right targeting and the right message. And so let's talk a little bit about the platform because I don't want to spend the whole time talking about Facebook because then people think, oh, because if they're listening to this and they don't like Facebook, then they just close it. Oh, yeah. They're like, oh, I don't like Facebook. <laughs> let's talk about other platforms and other things that people should be thinking about. Yeah. So, again, it really they need to identify their target market um, and what their message is going to be to that target market. And that will inevitably identify what platforms they want to use. Um, and so if their message is more about business, for example, you definitely want to use LinkedIn as a platform. Um, if your message is um, more focused on, you know, kind of visual content and storytelling, then obviously use Instagram. Um, Twitter, I have found it's actually a mixture of everything. Um, and it's really good in terms of, I would say, more medium to large businesses. There's things that you can do, strategies that you can do on Twitter, for example, that allow you to kind of target specific clients and kind of, you know, create that conversation with them um, over time. So they all have very um, distinctive ways of how to kind of get your message across to the to the right people. But ultimately what you need to do is identify, okay, who is my target market and where will they be? Because there's no point in you being, if your target market's on Facebook and you don't like Facebook and you're just posting – um, yeah, right? Like, you, Go to you Facebook to then, sorry. Yeah you, to, yeah, you need to do that, right? Um, because, you know, messages will ultimately fall in deaf ears if, you, if you're not on the right platform. Yeah, no, I get that. I, I say that all the time. So, for example, there's people, you know, obviously what's in the news all day nowadays? TikTok, right? All day long. It's yep. in the news. And there's a lot of other people on it, by the way. So I'm not saying anybody's particular mar- um, their, their market's not on there because I've seen lots of people use it creatively and, and, and do well. However, um, it's not about chasing fads. It's about a long-term strategy. And a long-term strategy means you have to, you, you want to be able to, to target in on your audience and create something that meaningful that's going to last. Um, so Georgina, I could talk to you about this all day long, but we're about <laughs> out of time. Um, so no that way, said, okay. If, if, if somebody is listening to this right now, and they, um, so two things, two-part question. If they, if they, first off, what type of company or business is the right type of client that you like working with, number one? Number two, um, what's the best way for them to reach out? Okay, well, first and foremost is that I have um, – not only do I teach you, so if you're brand new to it, and you, but you want to learn, I can absolutely teach you. So I can do that one-on-one coaching. Um, but ultimately, I'm looking for small businesses. So anything from one person, single solo entrepreneur, um, to up to 50 people um, or 50 employees in your company. So if you already maybe have a marketing person on your team, but they need you know more up-to-date skills or they need just a handout because there's just so much to do, um, I can obviously help there too. 
Um, and then, you know, the best way to reach me is to go through the website uh, is uh, topdogsocial.com. Um, and then, obviously, I am on Twitter, I am on LinkedIn, I am on Facebook, and um, I'm on Instagram. So any of those, you can find me there. Fantastic. Well, hey, Georgina, been awesome having you on the show today. So thanks for coming on. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. Um, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Marketing, definitely give us a subscribe there and uh, leave us some comments in the comment section. Love to hear what you're working on and what you have going on in business. Love to engage with you there. And Georgina, thanks again for coming on the show.